video I posted recently showed a ledger board and I had mentioned the ledger board and I went through um, the quick step-by-step -step process of the reason I use these uh, ledger boards, which a lot of tilers do. Um, so I'm going to do a little more comprehensive explanation of the ledger board. I think the question I had, I had received was how high up is the ledger board? That was one question. The other question is what do you do about the screws that you put into the wall? So I suggested using some silicone. Once you take the board out and you're finished with it, you can uh, squeeze some silicone in there. And he said, could I put Red Guard over it? And I said, yeah, but you still have to fill it in with something and then Red Guard over it. So those are the two, two questions that I got asked on that video. This one, I'm, hopefully that answered the questions. I don't want to keep on making the same type of comments on my videos um, because I think it's old to some people to hear the same thing over again. So ledger board basically gives you an opportunity to run all your tile up the wall. Um, if you didn't use the ledger board, you'd have to start at the bottom, which I used to do. Um, so the way I used to do it, I would take my full tile and whatever the curvature of the floor happens to be, because of course we have a slope going down to the drain, then I would measure the best I could, have my tile level, find the discrepancy at the bottom, and then cut off the bottom. And it would take me typically on a shower uh, an hour and a half to two hours just to set the bottom row of tile. And then I'm stuck because I can't really set more tile, maybe one more row on top of that. But, you know, you always run into the danger of your whatever you have down there as a spacer getting squished down there. And I don't know, just it, it was really, um, it, it was, it's an antiquated way to do it but I never really understood the ledger board process. And then once I understood that, and I learned that, ironically, I learned it from Tile Master GA. Um, years ago, I had seen him use a ledger board and was kind of curious about it, so I started integrating that into my work um, once you understand the use of it. So, again, you, you start with your ledger board uh, level. So you want to be completely level on your ledger board all the way around. Um, and in this case, I'm I'm using the most straight, um, um, what do you call it? The most straight, even thing that I could use, which happens to be a baseboard. Um, baseboards are generally straight and true, and they're very rigid. So you're going to get um, a good measurement on that. But the main thing you want to do is first get it level. Um, you are coming up. This tile happens to be 12 inches, and it's not 12 inches nominal, it's 12 inches exactly. Because I know that my lowest point of my shower happens to be um, from here to here, 11 and 3 quarters. So I'm a quarter inch off on purpose because that's what's eventually going to be shaved off. As I go around the shower, that measurement may change with regard to the bottom tile that I eventually cut after the ledger board is taken off, but it doesn't really matter. You want to go to your very lowest point with that 11 and 3 quarters. Whatever your tile happens to be, if it were, it, it wouldn't matter if it was a 6 inch tile, you would go 5 and a half inches or 5 and 3 quarters at your lowest point, and that's where your ledger board would go, so that you have a little bit of shave room with your tile once you start with your bottom row. Sometimes it gets difficult for me to explain things because it's easier to show it sometimes, which I'm going to do. So, imagine you're running your tile on your ledger board and you have it to the point where, as I said, this is a 12 inch tile. The ledger board is set 11 and 3 quarters, and so you just run your tile up as far as you want to. Um, everything is going to rest on the ledger board, and once all that's dry the next day, then you can pull your ledger board off. And then you take your bottom tile that you're going to end up using, the full pieces, and you actually turn it around. So if I was starting at the corner, for example, I would just turn it around. And whatever that measurement happens to be from the top of this tile, you see, or sorry, from the bottom of this tile, whatever that measurement happens to be, I mark my tile. And so I mark it on this end compared to this, and I mark it on this end compared to that. Then I draw a straight line across here, and that's my cut. Once that's done, I turn it over and back around, and it fits perfectly. Now understand something. 
you're going to need an eighth inch grout line here and you're going to need an eighth inch grout line down at the bottom where it meets the floor so whatever line you you, you use sorry whatever line you use make sure that you compensate for that quarter of an inch um, and just take off another quarter of an inch off of here um, when you do the cut that way you'll have your eighth inch here your eighth inch at the bottom and it'll be a perfect cut ah, I don't know if I confused you more than I helped you let me go through it again if you already got that you can click off the video right now but I want to I want to try to succinctly explain what I'm talking about once more um, the ledger board is used for your full tile your ledger board goes up just shy of what your full tile measurement happens to be at the lowest point of your shower so again if you have a 12 inch tile you go 11 and 3 quarters I am at this point or you can go 11 and a half it doesn't really matter anything lower then what your full tile is, that's what you want to do. Mm, did I explain that right? Anything less than what your full tile is, if your tile is 12 inches, you go 11 and 3 quarters, 11 and a half, 11 inches, really doesn't matter. But obviously you want as full tile at the bottom row as possible when everything is said and done. So in this case I'm going 11 and 3 quarters. I set all my tile that I possibly can on the ledger board. The next day I take the ledger board off. I take my full tile. I turn it around. Once I turn it around, I follow my mark from the very bottom of that tile. I follow my mark all the way across. I know exactly what I have because I've transferred that mark onto this tile. Because the tile is sitting right at the top of here. It's actually overlapping the top of that tile by that little quarter inch or whatever leeway room you gave and then you just make a little mark minus your quarter inch make a little mark on the tile and then you just draw a straight line across your tile you cut that off and when you cut it off the magic is once you flip it around it fits perfect where it's supposed to go that is the easiest way to explain even though I'm not good at explaining things sometimes, that's the easiest way to explain uh, the use of a ledger board. And as I said again, to reiterate, once you take off the screws, and you're going to minimize how many screws you use. In this case, I have four of them going across. I have a five-foot span, so you're not going to put a whole bunch of screws in there. But once you take the ledger board off, then you go ahead and put silicone inside there, or put some thin set inside there, and you know let that dry out the best you can, and put some red guard on top of it. Um, just so that you have, don't have penetration through your waterproofing. And that's as simple as it gets. Again, I'm using baseboard because it's the straightest piece of lumber that I can possibly get. Um, easy to work with, easy to screw through, and that's just my preference. If you had something else that was, a, that was you know, straight, like a level or something, you could use that as well. And that's as simple as it gets.